everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video and unfortunately it's being green screened out but this video is powered by tcg player look at it it's awesome thank you so much for sending me this today we are playing a warrior elves list that user 603 leb took to a 50 finish in an mtgo modern league but also victoro atnt also took it to a 50 finish in an mtgo modern league originally i saw this archetype Around two months ago, when user K10Forgotten in my Discord server showed me this list by Lumberjacks. And so I don't know who is the original creator of the list of the archetype, but let's just go with Lumberjacks. Can neither confirm nor deny, so take it with a grain of salt. But out of all three of these lists that I saw, it was 603 Lebs that I liked the best. And we did play one of 603 Lebs decks on the channel before, so I just must like their deck building style. So Warrior Elves is based around using Bramblewood Paragon, very old card. It is a bear. It's an elf bear, basically elf warrior. It gives like creatures that enter the battlefield an additional 1-1 counter on them if they're a warrior. So what we're going to pair this with is Growth Chamber Guardian. So this thing, when it has a 1-1 counter on it, you get to go and fetch another Growth Chamber Guardian out of your library, put it into your hand. So when you have the Growth Chamber Guardian um, being played, when there's a Bramblewood Paragon on the table, it's going to immediately make them enter with 1-1 counter. So you can immediately go and fetch the others out, produce a super wide board as wide as your mom, and just go in. But Growth Chamber Guardian is not the only elf that we're exploiting here. We also got Yuraga Warcaller. Uh, this is a card that I don't know why it was in elves for many, many years, because it's like super strong if you have a lot of mana, but it's a warrior. So it'll enter with another one counter on it from the Bramblewood Paragon. And it has multi-kicker. You can put as many counters as much mana as you got. And it'll give your elves plus one plus one for each one one counter on your Aga War Caller. You can make this thing huge. You can just happen to play it for a ton of mana off of Elvish Arc Druid and pump your board like crazy. And there just happens to be a lot of like warriors in the traditional elves deck that you didn't realize were warriors, like Azuri, like Dwinan's Elite, like Nettle Sentinel. So there just happens to be a lot of warriors in here anyways. So it took a while for people to discover that this archetype can potentially be a thing, but I'm all for trying new variants of elves. Just like recently we tried Hydra elves on this channel. I always like playing different kinds of elf decks. So let's give it a go. And before we get into it, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling down below. And if you would like to help monetize this channel so I can keep doing this kind of content, you can find the Patreon link down below in the description. But if you'd like to show your support for free, leaving a like, comment, and subscribe is very much appreciated. And an extra special shout out to The Real Shroom for being our top tier Patreon supporter for the month. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. For the best in MTG and MTG accessories, check out TCGPlayer.com through our decklist link down below. Anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off and you can write and play all the decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I'm going to be filming this video today. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. This is Warrior Elves. Of course, at our one drop slot, we have Elvish Mystic Land War Elves as our normal mana dorks, followed by Heritage Druid, which usually pairs with Nettle Sentinel to constantly untap whenever we play stuff. We have, um, as our warriors, we have Nettle Sentinel, we have Dwinan's Elite, we have Bramblewood Paragon, we have Azuri, and we got Yurago Warcaller, as we went over in the intro. Of course, we need to Elvish Arc Druid, a bunch of different copies, to be our lord and generate a bunch of mana to pump into Azuri to be able to overrun our elves and make them huge, or be able to just pump a lot of mana to either hard cast a Crater Behemoth or find it off of Turn Timber Symbiosis, which is also our land. Grow Chamber to pair with the Bramble. And onto the sideboard, we have three copies of Shaper Sanctuary for anti-removal, Gaia's Blessing for Mill, Inscription of Abundance in case we need to gain life and kill creatures, uh, Scavenging Ooze as our Graveyard Hate, Weather the Storm as anti-burn, Lay the Stampede for Grinds, and Reclamation Saggy for our Naturalized Effect. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against It's Fong 1. And we're going to be on the draw here with some warrior elves. This is kind of slow if we miss our land. Kind of slow if we miss our land. If we hit our land, though, we're doing some great stuff. So I'm going to risk it. 
but take a risk. We have 16, 17 more lands to draw into here. Looks like we're going up against uh, hardened scales. Ozolith scales. They don't got any plays. All right. Elves. Play the better of the two mana elves. Mountain. Okay, so it's not. So it's, uh... Oh, I got my land drop. It's, uh, Scred. Or not Scred, but just Mono Red Prison. Um... We'll just go Bramble plus another elf. Now, it's actually kind of crazy that this is going to happen, but Blood Moon is probably going to hurt us a lot. If they happen to, like, sweep us with the Sweltering Suns or something, Blood Moon will actually really hurt us. <laughs> Blood Moon time. Double SSG. Chandra. Okay, that's fine. Chalice on one. Okay, I don't I don't mind that anymore. I'm gonna go second bramble. Growth chamber. Get another growth chamber. Go to Wombat. Swing Chandra. All right, here we go. A braid for free. Probably gonna hit the 3 3 Bramble over here, which is fine. We still got plenty of card advantage to go. And another braid takes care of both of the brambles. Ooh, Arctrid. Um, we're just gonna go for EOT Coco. Why not? Don't want to accidentally run into a, a a sweeper. Let's just pass. Really hoping for no bridge or Karn or st some stuff like that. I'd launch her. So it's Tormran. Eidolon reveals Tormran. It's better for us. We don't mind Tormran. Ooh. Arcturoid into Azuri. Don't mind if I do, because that means we get lethal here. Um... Let me see. Yeah, if I go five here, activate Arc Druid and drop out another Arc Druid, that's huge. All right, let's do it. Take a trigger. Go here. Arc Druid number two. Overrun. And get in there for super lethal. I don't think they got anything to stop that. Yep, they're dead. Sideboard time. All right. Um, Mono Red, Torbran, Pyro Prison. Bring in Rexage for the bridge. We need a bridge answer. Bridge destroys us. And that's probably it. I'm not going to bring in Shapers because despite the fact they have things like a Braid, I know they're going to have Angers. Um, let's cut... Um, Crater? Crater Hoof? No. Cut a couple Nettles. Don't want to get shut down too hard by Chalice, so cut the Nettles. 
Hey, Hour of, didn't see you there. How's life? Slow, that's very slow. Um, I think I might be able to do better than that. They have SSGs and rituals, they can go fast. We need to keep up, so I think it's gonna be a mull. All right, sure. I think I'll toss Crater Hoof. You know, no, no, I'm gonna to toss a Bramble. Cause if I Coco into Arctrid, I'm gonna be able to hard cast Crater. Beefing up your MTGO Popper collection. Popper's fun. Lots of lots of fun popper stuff to explore. My favorite stuff was like the Iker Wellspring pick 'em up with Glint Hawk sort of decks. Glint Hawk, course Sky Fisher. Of course Sky Fishers in general were fun to mess around with. Chalice on zero? Why zero? Care about that? Alright, get out Bramble. Not confident enough to tackle modern yet with the big dogs like you. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to get into modern. Just play bruise, play burn. Start on start on mono red burn or something. It's not that it's not that hard. All right, we're going to try to find a wreck sage. Give me a wreck. Give me the wreck. There it is, Wreck, and let's go War Caller. Blow up Bridge. Now there's only one Wreck Sage left. They got a second one, it's gonna be a nightmare. You know, maybe getting Dwinans was going to be a lot more damage than getting Yuraga. Yuraga is a lord here, but with the Bramble giving the counter to both the Dwinan and the Token, it might have equated to more. Because that'd be five, whereas this produces six. Yeah, this is better. Start chaining. I guess we're going to start chaining these growth chambers. Let's do it. I'm going to grab another. Yes, go and grab another. Another one. Another one. And go to Wombat. Six, all right. That is massively overkill. Pray for no anger. No anger, no bridge. Bridge is fine though. Bridge is totally fine. Cause they, they're clunked. They're absolutely clunked. DG. Thanks. All right, we got the GGs. Taken down Torbran Pyro Prison. Fluffy Wolf is going to be very upset, <laughs> but Elves took you down. That's not Fluffy, but that's a deck that Fluffy plays. Torbran thing. He was like the first one I've seen to ever try to consistently put Eidolons in there. It's like it was, it was like his signature thing. So like this person found it from Fluffy. Got a game here against Telperian Kadu. They got Luris. We're on the draw here with some Warrior Elves. That's going to be a keep. 
Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Since it was Luris, they're probably gonna have lots of removal. Maybe I shouldn't have kept it. Oh, it's a, uh, it's the uh, Pure Steel Paladin deck. This list has, I've seen 503 different leagues in the past like month, so it's pretty legit. We're gonna see what it's capable of because I never went up against it before, so. It's a Colossus Hammer. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Turn off a lot of yields. Turn off a lot of yields. That was close. All right, Heritage. One, two, three. Bramble, Uraga. Paradise Man. Here's where they start going off, drawing a bunch. Getting it to the point where they can uh, metal craft, which they're about to do. They're gonna play one more equipment. They're gonna metal craft. They're gonna be able to equip that hammer for free. Yeah, so now they can swing 20. But I can chump. They're not gonna have trample. Yep. That's, oh, but that loses flying. It loses flying. All right. Mm. Maybe a chump with Bramble, the Lord. Um, yeah, keep the Lord, chump Bramble. Land of War. Coco. I can regenerate too, so no big problem. Grow Chamber, Mystic. Wait, no, no, no. All right, yeah, I can chump. I can chump and regen now. So, free chumper. And I can overrun, but will it be enough? I don't have Arc Druid, so you know, one, two, three, four, five. I can swing with five dudes. Five dudes will produce fifteen. Yeah, I have lethal. I have lethal. But they're going to be able to post combat move all equipment over to the untapped one. So do I still have lethal or not? I think I do. I still do. No, wait. Yes, that's. I think that's exactsies 20. I think that might be perfectly exactsies. All right, here. And regenerate. Down to eight. They're gonna move them over. You gotta move them over. The best draw would actually be a land here. So I can get one more body to swing with. But I think it's still Xaxes here. It's not okay. So what's the biggest dude? Grow chamber. They block grow chamber. That's six. And then this is going to be five, 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 and six. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. Overrun. Get in. Yeet. That's that's enough right there. That's one over lethal. You're done. Sure. Sure as well. <laughs> All right. That's going to be a salty one for them. I know it. All right. Sideboard. We want Rex Sage. We want 
Weather the storm could be interesting if they storm off and I just gain a bunch, but I'm not going to do that. Inscription of abundance could bite off the, the paladin early, but again, I think it's too slow. They're going to just be out the gates really quick. They're on the plate too, so. Just go just Rex Sage. I feel like I'm going to need Crater Hoof to like clutch it out from a, a weird situation. So let's just cut a couple nettles. We don't need all the nettles. All right, they're going to be on the play this time. Girl Chamber Guardian, sweet. Yeah, such a cool dude. Um, yeah, I have a wreck in this opener, so let's keep it. Wreck and double lord. Double, like, these are one drop lords once you have the bramble out. Got two of them, so that's sweet. Colossus Hammer's already out, so I already know what I'm going to target. And a Heritage Druid. Alright, this is looking good. Elf. Elvish Mickey. The best draw would probably be um, Widen's Elite here. That would be great if I can get that. Mem Knight. Stone Frog. Are they getting another um another hammer? Or are they getting Shadow Spear? Paradise Man. Alright, they're getting Paradise Man. A Shadow Spear would have actually been the play if I fire in their position, because you would want the hammer to like also have trample. Alright. Um Forest Elvis Mickey. Heritage Druid. Tap for three. Bramble. Yuraga. I'm not really fearing the hammer being equipped yet, so not Rex aging yet. Just want to get the aggression out there quick. Paradise Man to equip. Give him an extra mana. Taps for two. Oh, they got Paladin. Yeah, they got Metalcraft. They can equip the, the hammer now. All right, that's fine. I can take one swing. I can take one. Unless they play a Welding Jar. If they have a Welding Jar here, I'm going to be sad. Take the, take the 11. Take the smack. All right. Um... Hmm. Let me think this through. All right, I, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. So, the one here, Lana War. Tap here, here, and here for Wreck. Blow up Hammer. And yeah, let's let's multi kick this. Why not? I was just gonna do one, just just attack with those guys for six, but multi kicking here and not swinging six, only swinging four, is that gonna be better? It might. All right, yeah, get in there for five. Now that is a fat, huge, gigantic fat board. Not nearly as fat as your mom, but still decently fat. Should be enough. Uh, Zanku13579, thank you so much for the Prime subscription. Welcome. Enjoy the emotes. Appreciate it. I Thank you so much for that. How you doing? I don't think I've ever seen you here and you're already subbing. Wait, what is Prime Gaming? I've never heard of that. Did Amazon Prime come out with something new again? Like they always do. Now they have Prime Gaming. Maybe that's just what they call Twitch Prime now. Or is it just a separate thing? Maybe it's a separate thing. Maybe it's... There's Twitch Prime and Prime Gaming. Uh, I think I alpha here, right? If they chump my three biggest guys, say they eat... 
They eat the Yuraga that has two counters on him. And they chump Bramble and just a random... Uh, they chump Bramble and they chump Rexage. So that's... Um, then that means four... Eight, yeah, that's... That's enough. That's enough. Get in there. That's enough. Block my three biggest dudes. I'm still getting in for 16. No, no, I'm, I'm getting in for more. Yeah, that's, that's 20. I was getting in for 20. Wow. Taking down the good old Colossus Hammer deck. See, I, I've time and time again was thinking, am I going to play this on the channel? And I was like, uh, probably not. And now that I see it in action, it looks pretty, pretty powerful. Cause I was like super skeptical of, of pure still in here, but now seeing how easy it is to trigger, um, to trigger the uh, metal craft so you can equip the hammer for free. That actually seems pretty dang good. That should definitely be a staple now. GG. Got a game here against Stark607, who we played against a long time ago. It's been a while. Um, we're going to be on the draw here with some warrior elves. And this is going to be a keep that looks pretty good. We got Heritage into Dwinen to produce a bunch of mana. So let's keep it. I want to try to avoid bolting myself with turn timber, but if I have to do it, I have to do it. Ooh, that's good. That is good. I'll take it. I love when I, I have an elf hand with no mana dorks and I top deck the mana dork to just clutch it out. You always want that turn one there. I really wish Finhorn Elves was modern legal. I would just be an elves loyalist. Oh no! No, Ren, why? Dang it. Well, turn Tamber Symbiosis. We're going um, Grow Chamber Guardian, I guess. I mean, sure. I'm going to need something to beat down Ren. I need to draw a land super bad. Oh, no. All right, I'm scooping. Yeah, Jund is the... Like, absolutely the nightmare matchup for elves. They have so much removal. All right. But we're bringing in Shaper Sanctuary, and we're bringing in Scoozes. Do I bring in Scoozes? I think I do. Um, We're bringing in Lead the Stampede. We just need all the grind power. All the grind power. So we're going to cut um, Crater Hoof. Mm, Azuri is gonna be difficult to get online because they're gonna be killing so much of our stuff it's good because it can regenerate our guys but it's just difficult to get online with the amount of removal they got so i'm gonna cut that turn timbers of land so i have to keep it um do i cut nettle sentinel i think i do and then one copy of Dwinen's Elite. Sure. Hey, Polar. How you doing? No IZ modes today. We're going to play first. Mm. I mean, it's got double Coco, so I'm going to keep it, but... One could only hope they wouldn't get thought seized. We'll see. I mean, I, I agree that turn, turn Timber belongs in Elves, but I also find it really, really painful in the early game. I know it doesn't really matter because Elves is like an all-out aggro deck that's trying to out-aggro anything in front of it. So you don't really care about your life total, but now it is modern, you kind of do. It's all the red. So I'm always hesitant to play the lands like that for no reason, but when I know I'm never going to cast it. But Elves legitimately has a chance to cast Turn Timber if you have Elvish Arc Druid, so I could see it. And Ren is here to ruin our day. Now watch. I'm going to go Elvish Arc Druid here. 
and watch as they play Lily and make me sack it and proceed to keep ticking up Ren. It's going to be a bummer, but I drew another Coco. So if I draw a land and just get to go Coco into Coco into Coco, there is a pretty good chance that we can win. Okay, Command, make me discard your Aga War Caller. Broken, dude. Good thing it wasn't a Lily. This deck just removes stuff so efficiently. Drew a Bramblewood Paragon. I mean, playing it. Let me guess, Blood Braid into Liliana, like Broken Jun decks do. Blood Braid into Bolt. Kills our guy. Give me a hecking land. Okay, that's technically a land. Shock and go. They know what's coming. Elves are probably the most powerful tribe in magic. It's arguable. I think that if we're talking about modern here, that humans technically has a much stronger core, like in terms of disrupting the meta and answering things and being extremely efficient. Um, elves are fragile because if you kill the mana dorks, it kind of goes slow enough for you to deal with it. Merfolk is pretty good because it's got a lot of lords. It's got a lot of power behind it, but again, can be picked off by decks like Jun that have a, lo a lot of removal and stuff. Coco here, see if we can get some uh, Dwinan's Elites to block with or whatever. Ooh, that's a Scooze. Okay, give me Scooze. Give me Growth Chamber Guardian. And we're going to trade off Growth Chamber, but we're going to keep the Scooze. Open up these graves. We got a lot of stuff to eat now. I'm going to be able to kill that red. <laughs> if, they, if they don't have a push or a bolt here, I'm going to be able to kill that red right now. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna kill I'm gonna kill this red. So eat blood braid, eat grow chamber, eat ramblewood, eat Arcdred, war collar, and attack Ren. <laughs> that was a great turn. <laughs> that was a great turn right there. That was a really good turn. No, they killed it! See, they were sad they were tapped out there. They're like, oh, I'm not going to have to leave up Assassin's Trophy. Well, yes, you did. <laughs> Bob is here. That's going to be scary because they're going to draw a lot more removal. Oh, Turn Timber. I'm actually one mana away from hard casting now. I'm going to save it. So let's just, just pass in Coco. Pass in Coco seems good. Liliana. We take three. Liliana is kind of sucky because, like, it's going to make us ditch one of our very essential spells. We're going to ditch uh, Turn Timber. Hey, Philippa Ben. Philip. Philippi Bento. Hello from the United States. A lot of good cards for elves are not modern legal. Yeah, like Finn Horn Elves would be great. Like Legacy Elves is awesome. It's got the, the Quarion, whatever. It's got the Wirewood Symbiote. Such good cards for elves, but modern doesn't have them. Um, all right, we're going to trade off the Bob here. And we're going to attempt to Coco into Grow Chamber Guardians and stuff. Ooh, that's a goodie. All right. Let's Coco main phase. Grab a Bramblewood Paragon and a Grow Chamber Guardian. Go get two counters on it and fetch out another. And let's play Dwyden's Elite here to get two counters and give the elf token that it creates two counters, which is amazing. And let's attack Liliana. Actually, you know what? We're going to attack them. We're not really fearing... Um, we're not really fearing Lily anymore. We're just going to go after their face now. Goyf is here. That's fine. I don't care about that. I can go wide around it. 
And Liliana is going to make me discard my Growth Chamber Guardian, which is fine. Can I adapt in this Growth Chamber? It will not get additional counters, but whenever one of my counters I put on it... Okay, no, it doesn't work. Um... So if I attack all at them, they eat Growth Chamber Guardian, trade off for Bramblewood Paragon and Elf Warrior. I have Trample. Yeah, I'm going in. I'm an Alpha. I think that's lethal. I don't think there's anything they can do to, to live here. They got zero cards. I got Trample. I think that's it. We sneak it out without Shaper Sanctuary. Trampling over. Yeet. Nice. All right. Now we drew Triple Coco there. That is what we need to be done. Triple Coco. We really need the stars to align. If we don't get Triple Coco, we're screwed. So let's hope for the best. You hate MTG sometimes? Yeah, I, I only hate it when I get thought seized. When a Boggles player puts a what puts a a daybreak coronet on their creature and I can't do anything about it. When um somebody plays an ensnaring bridge that I don't have an answer for. And when Tron gets just natural one, two, three Tron on turn three. And uh when when Lantern Control doesn't let you draw anything. And when you just get mana, mana screwed. That's basically it. Or when I get Supreme Verdicted, or just any board wipe really. If I if my board gets wiped and it's devastating because I have nothing else to follow up with, then that's that's another thing. Is land control still a deck? No, it's it's really it's really not. People stop playing it after the Mox Opal ban, but it still could be played. It's not totally dead. Like you could still build a variant of it. It's just a little more tricky now, a little more trivial. The Aether hit a rogue. Hey last god. How's it been? Over with Fluffy and Navaros. Had your second stream today. Yo, congrats. I'm gonna give you a shout out. You're playing Dank Souls. Yeah, I just I just wasted money on Dank Souls thinking I was gonna like record a a, a YouTube series a Let's Play of Dark Souls, and uh, I didn't because I didn't have enough time to make my second YouTube channel. But maybe one day I will. Because I I haven't played Dark Souls in like nine years, and so I played it again, and it was pretty fun. It's my first time playing the remastered, although I never played uh, uh, Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. I never played it, so I was thinking of uh, picking that up sometime, but I don't know how expensive it is. It's probably like 40 bucks or something. Why is this game not starting? Okay, I got shapers. Keeping it. Shapers is what we want to start here. Yeah, good thing I got the backup. Scoos is out of there. We know that for sure. Mm hmm We had to stop on our draw stat. That's probably for K command right there. Thoughtseize, taking Bramble. 
or another shapers. Pigs bramble. Oh, they didn't hit their land. <laughs> it's amazing. I feel a lot more comfortable with double shapers, unless they got Lily. Because if they target our stuff, we divinate. <laughs> Divinating on target is great. And still no land. Um, do I want to get greedy and save this for a second? <laughs> or do I just want to play it now? Let's just play it now. Screw it. Play it now. Goyf would stonewall us, but still. Oh, don't mind if I do. Do not mind if I do. I will take that. That's ideal. I want them to target my stuff now. It's basically recycle for free. Nice. All right, so let's go Dwinans. And I'm gonna main phase Coco because if I hit another Dwinans, I'll be able to tap for more mana. All right, let's go Arc Druid Bramblewood. And pass it on over. <laughs> Again, don't mind if I do. Give me all them cards. And even a lead the Stampede too to refuel. Now this is how you beat Jund. Them getting mana screwed and you getting double shapers. And them not dot seizing them like a doofus. You should have taken my shapers. It was the correct play. Yes, I'll happily draw a couple. All right. Um, Mystic. 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 One, two, three. Arc Druid. And swing. Now, I should probably not commit any more out of fear of, um, of anger. Like, if they anger here, it's actually going to be pretty devastating. Not the end of the world, because I can still rebuild and I have double shapers to protect me. Um, but yeah, let's just go to combat and see if they got a darkness or a fog. Nope, they don't got it, and we took down Jund. Wow, beating Jund with elves is a difficult thing to do. I can tell you from experience playing elves on and off for several years. But we did it. We just needed them to get a little mana screwed and us to get double shapers. Got a game here against Moynis, and we're going to be in the draw here with some warrior elves. And that's going to be a mulligan, zero lander. That's another thing that I was fearing today, that we're going to get mana screwed a bunch because we only got 18 lands. This one is going to be a keep, I guess. And let's toss away. Mm, mm, probably Uraga War Caller. We want to have a good curve here. Uraga doesn't curve out very well with what we're doing. Maybe I should have kept it in bottom nettle and just not did a turn one play. Ooh, look at that. Raise the Rich Thicket. I want it. Wish I had a place out of those IRL. Oh, that's a great draw. That's exactly what we wanted. So as I was saying, um, my dad visited today and, and like the, took me out for uh, lunch and uh, we went to a burger place. And at this burger place, there was something called um, a Beg for Mercy burger because it was like supposed to be really hot. And so I ordered that and I got jalapeno poppers. So I was eating lots of spice. I was eating the jalapeno poppers and the Beg for Mercy burger. And so that, that could be a reason why my throat's a little... A little eh right now. Had a lot of spice earlier. Because I love spicy food. So when I saw a Big for Mercy burger, I had to get it. So the opponent's playing uh, Devoted Druid, I think. They got Self and Saver. Which is way superior to Dauntless Bodyguard, Dauntless Booty Guard.
So we are the absolute dream matchup for Druid Vizier because we have no removal. So they are free reign to just do everything. So, and we're not the kind of, of elf deck that wins very quick. We are the kind that goes wide, like your mom. So next turn is game. Unfortunate. All right. Ooh, we can name Crab Dog. Name Elf. All right, let's go Bramble. Into Growth. Go and fetch. Another one. Tap for four. Play another one. Go fetch another one. And play another one. Why do they have trample? Oh yeah, Bramble gives them trample. I mean, so next turn we got a lethal as long as the opponent doesn't combo here, but we know they're going to. We know they're going to. Um, You had some chili on Saturday um with some homegrown chilies if uh anything was a little too hot for me if anything it was a little too hot for me but it was still good you, like i haven't really found anything yet that was too hot for me i haven't ever had anything that was like this is so hot i can no longer eat it i always keep on eating hotter and hotter and hotter stuff and um technically the highest capsaicin um pepper i've ever eaten was chocolate bootlas which are um Dark, the the dark ghost peppers because peppers go through stages of of um, ripeness where if they're like yellow or orange they're like not as hot when they get red they get hotter and when they turn brown or like dark brown that's when they're the hottest they can get and so that's when um chili heads as we call them or people who like chili so a chili head like me we call those chocolate because they turn dark like chocolate so chocolate bootlas, which a bootla is short for boot jalokia, and boot jalokia is the scientific term for ghost pepper. So chocolate bootlas are supposedly really hot, and that, those are probably the most capsaicin pepper I've had, but they weren't the hottest pepper I had, because there's a difference between having high capsaicin and having spicy, like, spicy feelings. There's just certain peppers that hurt more than others, even if their capsaicin is lower. Like for example, serrano peppers, despite them being super low in capsaicin, have a more violent sting than like habaneros where they have a smoother sting. All right, we're going up against a deck that we need removal, so let's bring in the description of Abundance. All right, we're going to cut... I'm not quite sure. I really don't know. Maybe nettles, even though they work with the the thing, the thing thing. Yeah, they're I guess they're filler. Cut it. I should have cut in cocos actually. Gonna play first. All right, this one is going to be a keep looks fine enough we're not going to be able to ramp very efficiently so this inscription is not going to be used very well but we'll try let's name elf and go elf but i still like despite being a chili head i still don't know what's the difference between actual chili and salsa i don't know I'm not a connoisseur of that kind of cuisine, so I don't know the difference. Like, chili peppers obviously are peppers, but like, well, chili is an actual dish, and salsa is an actual dish, but I don't know what the difference between them is. I always, like, in my head think they're the same thing. Alright, turn timber. Let's go bramble. And then we'll go Yuraga. It's a one mana 2-2 two, two Lord with Trample. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Makes it super good. 
unfortunately, we're not going to be able to kill a devoted druid or vizier or anything because they have the selfless saver to protect it. Double bird. Please give me a land. I need to get this growth chamber out and get a second one. I need the aggression. If I can't get any aggression going, we're screwed. Please, deck. Have mercy. Drop a land. Nope. Mm. Guess we're going for beatdowns. So go to combat. Swing for a lot. Seven. They'll probably just take it all. Chili has beans and salsa doesn't. Capsaicin does have a high effect on, on heat though. As a pure wax, it's metaphorically lethal. Salsa is more tomato than chili. Chili has more tomatoes, but is more chili's flavor. Doesn't salsa also have like onions? I think that's a difference because I don't think chili has onions, but salsa does. And chili has beans, but salsa doesn't. Okay, I see. They both have tomato, though. All right, grill chamber gradient. Okay, they lost their selfless saver. They lost it. So, but they didn't realize that my guys have trample. Oh, wait, no, no. Though only, only the Uraga does. So I'm going to be able to use my inscription to fight again. So hopefully they just play a Voto Druid and pass. Hey, J3. Long time no see. How's the Destiny grind been going? Sorry I haven't been on much because I've been on, on PC. I've been playing on PC. I'm grinding out Beyond Light like crazy. Um, I'm already at level, I think, 91 in the season. Doing pretty good on my grind, despite the fact that I'm also trying to balance YouTube and streaming. And uh, on my off on my off time, I'm trying to grind out. Um, like usually late at night, I get on for like a few hours and play some Destiny before I go to bed. But during the whole entire day, I'm just working on stuff. You can put onions in chili, but not as many. Well, I don't know. I, I'm like I said, I'm not really a fan of of. Uh, of like Spanish food. I, I'm, I'm an Asian. I like Asian food. <laughs> um, and that includes Indian food. I love Indian food. Indian food's amazing because a lot of it's vegetarian. A lot of it does have chicken, which is a bummer. It's like, I, I'm a vegetarian. So like, I, I like, because like, like they don't eat beef in India. So they just use a lot of chicken in their stuff. But, but, but then again, a lot of their stuff Despite, because they don't have beef, a lot of it's vegetarian, and that's that's amazing. They make really, really good, just carb, just carb filled goodies. Just like their their bread, they're like non bread, and they're wrapped like samosas and stuff. It's just paneer and all the the curry and stuff. It's so great. I love Indian food. It's probably my favorite. That and like Chinese food. Um. All right. We. Oh, they have the giver. Okay, so I have to Inscription of Abundance here. Tire Creature you control. Flight Star Creature you don't control. Fight off Devoted Druid. I really wish this card was good, but I just... It's probably only meant for an elf deck and nothing else because elves can actually comfortably kick it, whereas no other deck can. All right, let's go for another Elvish Mystic and get in there for... A bunch? How much is this? Uh, eight? Nine? Nine. And they are going to chump block. They're going to five. I have six points worth of trample, and they only got two toughness, so it's going to be difficult for them to live here. Devoted Druid is... Okay, they got Postmortem Lunge. Yo. Okay, are we getting... I've I've played Devoted Druid decks a lot of times, and I've never, ever made proper use of Postmortem Lunge, and I think it's just happening in front of our face right now. Is it actually happening? 
Do they have Cord or Vizier or, or Coco? They only have two cards left. One has to be Vizier, one has to be Devoted Druid. The chances are very extremely low. But if they are Luxax, if they are a Luxac, then their last two cards are exactly that. Nope. They didn't have Urkel, but at least they revealed Postmortem Lunge. That's information. So I could bring in Scoos, but I'm not going to prepare for that. I'm just going to leave it as is and try again. Mm -hmm. But I love Chinese food too because um, all the like noodles and rice and stuff is good, but um, dumplings and all the little things that are like dumplings that they got are just so great. But my favorite food in the world is veggie spring rolls, veggie egg rolls. Just, it's so good. Just put a little bit of turnip, carrots, carrots and cabbage in there and like spices and herbs. All right, this is going to be a mulligan. That is going to be a keep. Um, although it is pretty slow. We can't quite activate Azuri efficiently with his hand unless we Coco into um, Elvish Arcturid. Let's keep it, and I think... Do I toss away Azuri? Because I, I want to be able to go Elf into Elf Elf into Coco. I just don't think Azuri's, like, I don't want to play a turn to Azuri here. Yeah, I'm bottoming Azuri. I can't recall if I own a Pendlehaven in real- Oh, yeah, I do, I do. I do own a Pendlehaven. I get confused, like, which cards I own and don't, because I've, I've built up my collection quite a bit, but now that I'm actually, like, in a position where I'm running out of money, I might have to, like, sell off a bunch of my collection. Just collecting over the years, I've just like acquired my collection, but it might finally be time to let it go. Unless YouTube gets its act together and gives us our like ad revenue back. Like ever since the beginning of this year, ad revenue sucks. Like it's been going down and down. Just ad apocalypse, dude. Coppa, the the law the that got passed at the beginning of the year. So much advertiser's been taken down. And yes, of course, I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> but uh, like ad revenue has been killed for a lot of YouTubers. All right, we're going to die next turn. Get out Bramblewood Paragon. The Shark Druid and pass. Elves is really fun. I, I've played Elves on and off for years, and I could see playing a Bramblewood Paragon variant this is really cool. Um, I'm going to Coco now to see if I can hit a um, Yuraga or like a, a Lord like Elvish Arc Druid or something. All right, Elvish Arc Druid and Dwyden's Elite because it makes the Elf wear a token. So we get double the 1-1 one -one counters. 1-1 one counter on that and a 1-1 one -one counter on the token. Make it a 3-3, three, three, which is amazing. And get in there with Bramblewood. And next turn should be lethal. Because we're going to be able to tap Elvish Druid for a bunch and Coco into perhaps more Lords and get in there for a billion. Ellen Omri's, all right. They're going to get their Vizier, but that's their last card. They're going to have to be a Luxac in top deck. Their Druid, their, their uh, um, Duskwatch Recruiter, or they're going to have to crack their Canopy and find it. So they topped a Bobble. They're probably going to Bobble themselves. Or are they going to grab Loris and recast the Bobble? So, oh, they grab Walking Ballista. That means they already have the Vizier. No, no, they have one card in hand. That's Walking Ballista. All right. All right, so we got it. Did we actually get it? 
Are we getting them GGs? Oh, no, we're not. All right. I think we got it. Just simple walking blister here doesn't do it. So they can, like, tap there, crack the canopy, tap on tap, and play a vizier and go infinite. So, yeah, their last hope is the canopy. Yeah, that ballista ain't gonna, you can kill the, the elvish arc dread, and that would kind of slow me down a lot. Doesn't look like they are. Tap here in the Elvish Arc Druid. And let's Coco. Actually, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Untap. Play Land or Elves first so we can produce an additional mana. Then tap here for eight. Coco, hopefully hit another Lord. Okay, Yuraga is another Lord. Put the rest on the bottom. Crack this um, nurturing peatland. Play a forest. Go to combat alpha. Just throw it all. Send, send in it. That is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. That is 22. They're going to be able to untap and get protection from color. Um, so, yeah, they can, they can live here. They can live. And you have another chance to top deck Vizier or another El Adamri's call. Or a Coco. Cord, Revolution, whatever it may be that they have. But something that this deck does not have, which I find kind of interesting, is uh, Elvish Clan Caller. But I understand that Elvish Clan Caller does not quite fit in the list. The list is very tight. It's like, would you rather run Elvish Clan Caller or would you rather run Bramblewood Paragon plus Growth Chamber Guardian? And I, I, there's a good argument for going Growth Chamber and also going Yuraga War Caller. I, I honestly think it might be better than going Clan Caller. They just died. They didn't realize this had trample, and they got over. They didn't block with all their other stuff that they were supposed to, and they could have killed the the Elvish Archery a long time ago, which they should have, but they didn't. And uh, that's gonna do it, taking down the Druid Vizier combo. And it's actually a miracle that we actually did, because like I said, their deck walks all over ours because of the fact that we have no removal. I mean, we do have inscription of abundance, but we have very limited removal, and they can just literally, they're. Devoted Druid decks can consistently turn three every time if undisrupted, but we dodged a massive bullet there, so they didn't do it. And we capitalized on him because Elves punch his face. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the speed-up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games, unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD from last Monday. We're only speeding up one single round today. And this was a long one. It was like half an hour. I didn't want the video to be like an hour and like 35 minutes. I prefer it to be like around an hour mark. So I think that it was best if we sped it up because it was technically blue eye control. And you know, blue eye control matches are always super long. So it was technically blue control, not exactly. It was an Emery style like artifact deck, but it was like, mix with blue eye control i don't know exactly what their plan was but i had a suspicion because i saw a ryo Sorotami ascendant so for those who don't know what that card does if you cast four spells in a single turn you flip that thing into an enchantment that says counter the first spell your opponents cast each turn now i saw this list 5 of the league recently and it was really interesting and i was considering playing it on the channel their version it just seems to be blue eye control that literally it just has emery synergies and it's weird. I don't know like what they're trying to do, but Arreo, despite them being able to flip it, it didn't really affect us because of the fact that we had Cavern of Souls to um, name Elf. And so we can just literally still cast multiple spells because of, um, we like Arreo only counters the first spell you cast each turn. So if you make your first one uncounterable, the next one will just resolve. So there is that. And also we can find creatures off of Coco and stuff like that. Now, the opponent was able to control out a bit and sweep us, but we were able to slowly rebuild because um, they were getting low, and they were also very low on cards as well because while them they're being like blue at control, they're not the the typical variant of blue control that has like 
like worlds and worlds of card advantage. So they were able to, or they happened to run out of cards. So it just became a top deck war at that point, And we were top decking our good elves. Thank goodness that Warrior Elves has a lot of good top decks, especially at this point. Like, imagine a Yurago War Caller. We'd be able to multi kick that for a million and just be a lord that gives our creatures like plus four, plus four. Um, so, fortunately, we were able to take down um, Blue Eye Control and snag the 5 0. And with that, let's go on to the wrap up of the video. Hope you enjoyed. So, we snagged ourselves the 5 0 with Warrior Elves. I really like the deck and uh, I don't see any actual flaws or anything I would change about the main deck. I was really hesitant about the fact that it's an 18 land deck, just the 14 lands and the four turn timbers. It's kind of a little light on lands, but elves can totally get away with 18 lands because of the sheer amount of mana doors it has. If you have a hand with at least two lands in the opener, you're good. So I think it can get away with that. But that was the one thing I was sketched out about. Like I would probably go up to 19. But yeah, the, the deck was cool, flowed super well. And I, I guess the question uh, in the middle of the stream was, this deck does not have Elvish Clan Caller, which has since become a staple of elves. It's not in here because the list is very tight. Now the question is, would you rather have Elvish Clan Caller or would you rather have the Bramblewood package of Bramble, Grow Chamber, Uraga, War Caller? And I honestly, when, when K10 Forgotten sent me this list in my Discord and I saw it, I was like, it's pretty interesting and I like I don't do this often but I actually save that list aside to play it at some point and now that I see other people starting to like 5-0 leagues with it, I was like okay maybe it's legit maybe I should get on this and uh because I was thinking oh it's just cute at first but it was actually pretty good it really out exceeded my expectations like the fact that you can just start chain and grow chambers one after the other and then you know play like this thing can make your uraga war callers into one mana lords like one mana clan callers and like multi-kicking this is insane and then also running turn turn timber as well hitting a uraga war caller off of that will proceed to give it three one one counters so that it becomes a lord that gives your entire board plus three plus three and if you happen to have a Bramblewood, also gives Tramble. So it's like build your own Azuri activation. It, there's so much synergies with that. And there's like, it, like the Bramble also makes your Dwinin's Elites insane. Also pumps your, your other things here, Nettle and Azuri. It just, it, it fits so well. And it really, like I said, exceeded my expectations. I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was. And I could actually see myself building this IRL. Seeing as how I love to play elf decks and I've been playing them on and off for years, I could see myself building this variant and actually taking it like legit to tournaments and actually treating it like a serious deck because I think it really is. Snagged us the 5-0. We did go up against a little bit of bruise, like a little jank, but we did take down some serious stuff, including, including elves' hardest matchup, which is Jund. They did get a little bit mana screwed, but we we're still able to take them down prior when they didn't. So, yeah, it takes all it all it takes is like a shape or sanctuary or two because when they're so removal heavy, if you have that out there, you start replacing like everything they kill with another thing, and it makes it hard for them to keep up. You just keep dropping thing after thing, and they keep killing it, but you keep getting more. Eventually, they're gonna run out of removal spells. So that's why three shape or sanctuary in the board is definitely needed. Whenever I play elves, I always have that there. So this 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 elf deck is serious business. There's also the thing that um, you don't have to run Dismember anymore as your removal spell in green. You now have Inscription of Abundance, which is pretty cool. So you have access to a semi sort of reliable removal spell. It may be a little bit slow, but at least it's a removal spell. and also gives you a way to gain a bunch of life as well if you have a fat dude. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would recommend trying it out if you're an Elves fan. So with that... That's going to end it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest the gameplay every other day. We upload our gameplay every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you like brews in the modern format, that then you've come to the right place. And uh, let me know a deck you want to see in the comments down below. Go check out the social media. The Twitter is down below. The link to Twitch is there as well if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream our Magic the Gathering gameplay all day long on Mondays. We stream variety through the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday. So come out if you want to see some of their games. 
And if you want to try the deck out for yourself, consider signing up with Mana Traders. The link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off. You can rent today's deck, play along with us. They are the most trusted and reliable Magic Online card rental service. It is what I personally use and how I'm filming this video right now. And if you want to pick up the deck and paper, or any cards really, consider picking them up through our deck list link down below. That's our tcgplayer.com affiliate link. Anything you purchase there. Oh, affiliate. That was a... That was a blast in the past. The PCGplayer.com link, anything you purchase through there, really helps out the channel. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out. Thank you so much to our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Patreon is a platform where you can financially support the content creators you love. And if you would like to go the extra mile and help monetize these MTG video creations so I can keep doing this kind of content, the Patreon link is down below in the description. But if you'd like to support the channel for free, hitting that like and subscribe button down below is well enough for me. And a quick special thanks to our top tier supporter this month, The Real Shroom. And that's about it guys, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.